In the black void of open space sits the Baleen class Rebel Freighter, the Fluke, home and base of operations for Purgle Company. Inside, crammed into the conference room, are the 12 members selected for this special mission, and one grouchy looking Duros with his hands clasped behind his back. Lieutenant Everson begins his briefing. The Empire has left itself vulnerable on Druggenwell, and the time to strike is now. I know 12 people against a garrison seems ill-advised, but the desire is for you to get in and get out before being overwhelmed. Remember, the trick is to make the Empire think you're an invasion force, not actually hold the planet. Tweak, Vinsky, N0P3, we'll need you to infiltrate and take out the garrison's armor. Ace and Zack have identified a couple ATSTs and a TX-225 occupier that can pose a problem. I'm not exactly an explosives expert. Nope. Don't worry, you scary hand about that. Just keep the imps off our backs and Nope and I will do the rest. Additionally, it'll be necessary for you to conduct your simultaneous missions before the main assault. Brack is the local resistance leader and will handle your covert entry through the dicey cantina. You can also provide safe harbor if anything should go wrong or you become separated. Good luck, Burgle Company. May the force be with you. Hmm. Who's ready for some fireworks? Sabotage. Purgle Company's demolition team heads deep behind enemy lines to purge Druckenwell's Imperial Garrison of their precious walkers and tanks. Tweak, Vinsky, and the altered medical droid Nope find themselves on the outside of the Imperial base, looking for a way in. Alright, welcome to you, Sabotage. Here we are at the first session for your mission. Let's do introductions. Michael, why don't you go first? Sure. Uh, Michael, I am known as Loser MLW on most of the socials. I play primarily in the Redemption podcast, which is a Star Wars actual play, part of like the Star Wars podcasting group that uh, Dicey Cantina is also a part of. And uh, today I'll be playing the character of Finsky uh, Glek. Finsky is a Trandoshan mercenary who is out to do some good to try and make up for a whole lot of bad. He's got a lot of red in his ledger, put it that way. Niffer, how about you next? Hi, I'm Niffer. I'm from Tabletop Galaxy and Edge of the Empire podcast, also in the Star Wars Alliance of Podcasters. And I'm playing N0P-3, or nope, who is a refurbished, I guess, medical droid. By experimentation, been given sentience and self-awareness, and... Also a vendetta against people who experiment against droids. So now they're gonna hopefully blow stuff up. Uh, you you have a a friend with you, don't you? I do. N zero P dash three dash J R, aka Nope Junior, who also wants to blow stuff up. Awesome. I'm sure that will be very relevant soon. We are of the same mind. It is okay. And Erica, you're next. I am Erica. You might recognize my voice from podcasts such as not another tavern dice for brains and recently i was on two episodes of course Hot nights and now i'm here with the dicey cantina playing my third ever star wars game it's exciting <laughs> i had to count <laughs> you can find me on twitter at tis the good witch and in this session i am playing tweak i'm a shadra fan i was recently a indentured worker for the Empire, their words, not mine. And I uh, I work for the Rebellion now, and I primarily work for the Rebellion by blowing things up. I'm all about sentient rights, um, so that's talking about, like, all sentient beings in the galaxy. Not just, you know, Shadrafan and Twi'lix and everything else, but also droids, thanks to my good friend, Nope, and little friend, Nope Jr. And I'm still trying this voice. <laughs> hey. You're doing great. Does, does Tweak consider all droids to be sentient, or what level of, of sentience is required to meet that? Tweak thinks that all droids are capable of sentience. I'll take that. Good answer. We could spend the rest of the night philosophizing about Let's that. Let's absolutely but... do that. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of that hot topic of debate, maybe we'll <laughs> dive in to the, uh, the ever-important destiny roll to get things oh, going. Right. All right. So roll me a, a white dice. Finsky got one left. One light to which one? Light side. Light side. 
Oh, I got two light side too. So you guys start with five light side tokens. And also, Dicey Cantina participates in Donate for Destiny, which means that you get an additional light side token thanks to Lily. <gasps> Amazing. She says, Thank may you, the force Lily. be with you. Thank you, Lily. Thank you, Lily. So you, <laughs> you have six light side tokens, and I have none to make your lives more difficult. <laughs> We explode everything perfectly, and we don't look back while we walk away. The end. Yeah. I mean, hopefully someone brought explosives, because otherwise you might need these tokens. Most things have explosives in them if you know how to wire them properly. Exactly. That's what the computers and mechanic skills are for. So you guys have journeyed with the rest of Purgle Company to Druckenwell. You rode in a not particularly cramped U-Wing piloted by the Drow Mim, who landed at the Dicey Cantina's secret hangar underground. But you quickly moved on to your mission. So you moved up north into the industrial city of SGI Area 9. And you've made your way to the large kind of courtyard outside where there, these different industrial buildings kind of meet the, the residential districts. The, the industrial city is, is run by a single corporation, SGI. As a corporate city, it's kind of divided into to different sections, and the Imperial Garrison has made its home here on the other side of this rather large courtyard. Druckenwell has very similar visual aesthetic as Coruscant, other than it's not layers upon layers. They've industrialized most all of the planet. Uh, it's late in the evening, and some people mill about and moving on to the late night shifts. And you guys are outside at the northern end of this courtyard. And you can see kind of on the other side, again, it's like a couple football fields wide, the big blast doors that signal the armor section of this Imperial Garrison's base. So they, they've built up some walls around it. There's some security droids float going past and all of that. And some stormtroopers and pairs kind of patrol around. You've made your way undetected and, and have a moment here. You guys kind of stand quietly at the corner, watch the patrols go by and make your plan. Uh, I guess Tweak is kind of standing half behind Finsky. Because she doesn't really want people to notice her because she's got her data pad in her hand and some scanner goggles over her eyes. And she's scoping out the base. Binsky's wearing his blaster pistol, but he's got most of the rest of his gear in a large pack that's strapped across his back. He's looking left to right, looking through traffic, and turns over his right, so right shoulder. Yes, who are we looking for? Who do we meet for this... This mission. That is an excellent question. Well, we're looking for a fulcrum agent that goes by the call sign Lever. That's not obvious. Anyway. Lever? Yeah, I don't think it's clever either. Well, let's do some perception checks then. Yeah, I was gonna say, is there cool. like a possibility that we can sneak our way through, or is this like very strongly guarded? There's gotta be a back door, right? There are some light side tokens, or you can make average perception check, and we'll go from there. And an average check means two purple dice. It does. I am going to add a setback, too, so I'm adding a black. No. For the, the rain and the, the night. I have acute senses, so I can remove two setback dice for my perception checks. Well, there you oh. go. I added two, and now there's none. I'm going to make a boost die because I'm wearing scanner goggles. Yes, you did describe that. You can have a boost dice for that. I got three successes and two advantages. Right. Well, how do you guys want to spend your advantage? The stormtroopers don't notice us. Definitely. Their patrol isn't currently anywhere near where you guys have set up on the opposite end of the, the courtyard. And the, the courtyard has various fountains and things like that. It's not just a wide open space. Nope is like standing like perpendicular to... Binsky and is like pretending to put a bandage on arm just to look nondescript. Snope is a medical droid to kind of help us blend in. Um, okay. okay. I'd like to spend one of our light side points. All right. I'm going to spend one of the destiny points. And I, I think what I'd like to have is to have a message come through Tweak's comm from a contact that maybe Tweak still has or contact that she's got within the organization asking her why she hasn't arrived at the rendezvous yet yes that absolutely can happen okay so there's a little chirp alert on your data pad 
and the, a little message pops up and, and dings and says, I'm here. Where are you? Why haven't you made it here yet? I'm in uh, the, the black raincoat over by the tree. The purple tree. There's one purple tree. And then since you guys have some successes that we haven't spent or described yet either, you can see that the, there's a nondescript person in a black raincoat by the purple tree a little bit further, closer to the barracks that, that you guys have been scoping out. They being more or less nondescript than us. Yeah, they're just, they, they look like they belong in the, the, the small crowds we're walking through. But they're, they're, you know, typing on a data pad and another message comes in. Are you close? Close enough to see you over by the fountain. I type back. The uh, head pops up and, and looks around. I will just lift a hand and just kind of wave. Who are you waving at? Oh, our agent. Where? I think he'll be joining us shortly. And so, yeah, so the this human male walks up, you know, at carefully having s- snaked through the crowd to you group there. Finally? What took you guys so long? Right. All right, this is the the spot. This is where we know the Empire is keeping its armor here. I've seen a, the blast doors here at the front and some patrols going in on a, on a side door here and there. But uh, other than that, it's kind of difficult to, to get around. They've got a bit of a exclusion zone around the base, as you might guess, so. The Imps are nothing but efficient. Yeah, they're, they're taking their security pretty seriously. Do we have a layout? I, I have a, a an approximate layout for you based on our intel. And just like immediately is like out for you. He uh, pulls up the, the data pad. And so you have a, a little hollow of the map. Excellent. I have a hollow projector. That's one of the things that I got. Okay. Are you going to project the map? Can I do it like over my palm and make it really small? Yes, you can. I will like flick it up to make sure it works. Not here. And then flick it down because Tweak said not here. All right. Well, I've, uh, I can't say much longer, so uh, I've, got, I've given you all the, the information I can. I think that's the, the building you guys want. And he uh, pulls the hood back up over his, his face and disappears into the crowd. Bye. A little hand wave as he goes. Shoulders shrugged in the right. So do you guys want to find a spot to look at this hollow map? Definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we definitely duck around the back corner into an alley and... Uh... Maybe find, like, an overhang to shelter us from the rain a little bit while we do some tactical plan. Pretty sure Finsky can just hold out an arm and you'll be dry. Finsky does lift up his arm and the, the kind of the, the slicker that he's wearing would certainly cover Tweak. Well, maybe I'm not thinking about me. Maybe I'm thinking about you. I don't want your joints to get rusty. Who knows the next time you'll get an oil bath. Oh, yep, yes, oh, uh, no. There you go. There's why you say nope. You get nope, no, and yes mixed up. So you guys find a, a tucked away section behind the, in an alley to take a look at this map. And it's, uh, it's not too informative. It's obviously kind of created from what your average citizen can gather from walking around the base. There's this blast door that guy was talking about that goes into kind of a, a fueling area, kind of an open air space that uh, vehicles could pass through and then behind that is another blast door that presumably leads into the hangar you know these are these are the big blast doors that, that walkers and and tanks could make their way through there's a door that's kind of being used as the entrance for personnel is just kind of off to the left of the the blast door. Uh, it's got a couple of stormtroopers that stand guard outside of it as people come in and out from the base, uh, which presumably leads into kind of the personnel section of the base, a barracks, a cantina kind of space. There's a kind of big wall, walled off section at a right angle from the right side of the blast doors uh, that has a little bit taller buildings that kind of have some warehouse tops to it. So there's probably some storage there and it kind of backs up to some of the other bigger uh, industrial buildings and and warehouses uh, in the back. So there isn't an immediate obvious place for a back door to be, but that doesn't necessarily mean there isn't one. And you guys can can roll some more checks if you want some more information or you can make a plan. Nope was just going to kind of point in the direction and just ask Backdoor? Maybe. Uh, so let's take a knowledge warfare, perhaps, next. Fun. To guess what's inside without going inside. So I'm going to spend a point so I can turn one of my green dice into a yellow dice because I have no knowledge stuff. I'm going to take a boost die because I was a quote-unquote indentured worker for the Empire. Yeah, go for it. And what kind of difficulty? 
This is a hard knowledge warfare check. So three? Three. Three purple. I did get a success, and that's a lot of it. Three advantage. No, wait, 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 wait. Oh, no. I didn't succeed. I only got three advantages. Okay. Well, since this check was to determine, you know, what I think is where inside of the base schematics that we don't really get to see, I do at least have a general idea of where the thermal detonators are. There's uh, the, the warehouse building that's on the right side of the, the blast doors that doesn't have uh, an obviously accessible door from the outside. It seems to be where they would store most things, including probably some thermal detonators. Perhaps our best approach is under the streets. The sewer system? Could I send Nope Jr. to do a casual walk around and see what observe? That would be the stealth roll. That would be the stealth roll. All right. Does Nope Jr. use my stealth? Hmm. We weren't going to give him things, but we can also... So you spent... Uh, how many advantages did you have, Erica? Three. You had three. So your thermal detonator information is probably one. So you got two left. You can spend it on a, a manhole cover out right next to you guys if you want. Yes. Or you can send Nope around, uh, Nope Jr. around. Uh, yes, there's definitely a nearby entrance to the sewer system. And I will add a boost die to a stealth roll for okay. Nope Jr. So Nope Jr., if you want to send uh -huh. Nope Jr. walking around, uh -huh. is going to be, he's just a, a base droid. So he's going to have one agility, no skill, but he can take a boost dice for his size. So one green and one blue? One green and one blue. And it would be a hard check depending on how close you want to get. God, we should have sent Tweak for this. <laughs> I mean, we also could have just sent the actual Nope instead of Nope Jr. But we got a success and two threats. <laughs> okay. So I want to just kind of like, Nope is just going to unlatch Nope Jr. and like do a lot of like the high pitch like dial up noises to like convey all of this information really fast between the two of them. Uh huh. Of like, look for doors that are unguarded and look for like, whatever else Tweak tells him to look for and and then just kind of like send them out. Junior will do a little like full walk around and then come back. So Nope Junior kind of broadcasts back to you as he walks around in, in this little, this child-sized medical droid. And he confirms, you know, the, the information given to you by the contact is the, the same as the walk around that was there previously. He is able to make the, the full circuit but as he completes the circuit, he's uh, heading back kind of towards you guys, but he walks a little too close to the main door and the stormtroopers there raise a hand and, and say, Oh, oh no. The only thing that Nope Jr. can say is actually Nope. So the couple of stormtroopers come over and, and start inspecting Nope Jr. Nope Jr. will halt, but also say Nope. Yes, they're very confused. Nope. What are you, what are you guys going to do about Nope Jr. here in his interaction with the stormtroopers. Bring him back this way. But fucking the, <laughs> the stormtroopers are asking Nope Jr. for his droid credentials. Nope. And his papers nope. to be on planet. Yeah. He he doesn't have any. He's Ugh. he's a droid. So the, the stormtroopers, after getting several nopes. Would we actually have papers to be on planet or are we here illegally too? You were here illegally. You were smuggled in by Mem to the Dicey Cantina. Dracula's a highly regulated planet. Because you need SGI credentials to be in SGI Area 9. Nope's a slicer. How quickly could Nope whip up some credentials for Nope Jr.? Yeah, how quickly could I whip up credentials for Nope? Yeah, you better roll then, I guess. I I do, like, breaking codes and communication stuff. So, maybe. Finsky's starting to pace in the alley. Why didn't we do this on the way here? <laughs> This is true, because I didn't know that we needed papers. What would I roll to make papers? I think that's a skull, skullduggery. Yeah, skullduggery. Skullduggery. Yeah. I love that word. I have one rank in skullduggery. Tweak would do it. Okay, I'll roll. What was the difficulty? 
The difficulty is two purple and a red as I flip my <laughs> one of two difficulty things here. Why? Well, I will flip that right back to upgrade one of my green. <laughs> okay. Yay. So, and there's going to be a setback for the short time that you're doing this in. It's a failure and an advantage. Oof. That red dice really came through. Since Nope Jr. has a open comm, you can hear the stormtroopers that have been asking him questions, and he's been saying nope. nope. And they've called for assistance, and a droid has come out and loaded Nope Jr. onto a, a <gasps> little, like, forklift. Oh, no! And fitted a restraining bolt on him okay. and takes him into the base. They had to get a forklift for him? He's two feet tall. They didn't want to carry him. Oh, yeah, that'd be demeaning. I was just like, it was like a little forklift droid came out and like stuck little arms. I guess you have an advantage. I guess he doesn't necessarily attach the restraining bolt if you want to spin that that way. Yes. But, okay. Yay. I like but, that. But yeah, he's like, it's like a nanny droid comes out and picks oh, him great. up from under the arms and wheels him into the base. Oh, we have a man on the inside now. I know, right? This actually works in our favor. <laughs> Huzzah. <laughs> this is what we wanted the whole time. So yes, totally. That advantage totally goes towards Nope Jr.'s restraining bolt doesn't actually attach properly because, you know, Nope and Tweak are both, you know, sentient rights. So mm -hmm. we have devised a way for restraining bolts to just not work on Nope and Nope Jr. It's still experimental, but in this case, it's working. I like that. Yeah, it could be like a false, a false contact pad. So there's a contact pad for a restraining bolt it looks like there's a contact pad there, but it doesn't actually do anything. Yeah. Yes. Amazing. Y'all. Tweak is like tapping on Nope and he's like, oh, it's working. Yay. So the troopers take back up their position at the door. The door closes behind Nope, who's now inside. But you guys are still outside. And maybe you want to be inside. Nope, we're going to do the whole thing completely from here via Nope Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Does the little Nope have a scanner? Yes. Light side point. Nope Jr. has a scanner. <laughs> All right. Uh, we want Nope Jr. to be taking data from the inside, namely, you know, like schematics. <laughs> and yes. You know, yes. are there any manhole covers in this Imperial base? Oh yes, he has. Um, has the visual scanners he can do that. That relays back to both of our data pads. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, so. Where's this droid go? Why did I make this happen without thinking it through? <laughs> I'm just reacting to two threat. That's the only thing that has gone well, and it was because of a threat. Yes, you had two, two threats. That's why they've now taken him inside. So there's a manhole cover in the like refueling station section behind the big blast door that you see as, as Nope Jr. Is, passes over that section and into the hangar. Inside the hangar, you can see two ATSTs parked there and a uh, troop tank, like the one from Rogue One. You know, perhaps your targets. The nanny droid drives past all of that into kind of the, the back section. And mm -hmm. there in the back, you can see a group of six beings uh, behind a, a force field, uh, one of those nice red prison force fields that temporarily turns off as the as Nope Jr. is dropped off inside. The nanny droid drives away. So Nope Jr. has been put in the cell with these other beings. There's two Zabrak, uh, two Twi'lek, uh, Miriallin, and a uh, Pantoran. Is Nope about to make prison friends? I'm currently writing a list reading possible allies. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Dicey Cantina. Enjoying the show? Consider giving us a five-star review on your favorite podcatcher and reach out on Twitter at Dicey Cantina, shoot an email to diceycantina at gmail.com or record us a message over on our page at anchor.fm. We'd love to hear from you. Your support truly helps the show grow. And for a preview of another exciting podcast, stay tuned after the credits. We want to say thanks to Michael, Niffer, and Erica for joining us on Purgle Company's adventure. You can find Michael on the Redemption podcast and tales of blood and stone as well as on twitch 
Twitch at twitch.tv slash gamers table. Nifer can be found on Tabletop Galaxy via Twitch and YouTube. And you'll find Erica on Twitter at Tis the Good Witch. This series Destiny Pool was bolstered by Donate for Destiny. Shout out to Lily over on Twitter at handle Lilies for boosting our light side pool. Thank you, Lily. We so appreciate your generosity. Also, did you know that Donate for Destiny is now over halfway to its $500 goal? Thanks so much to everyone joining the cause. Listen up for the following special preview, but in the meantime, that's all for now. So pull up a stool, and we'll see you here next week in the Dicey Cantina. A long time ago, in a galaxy far away, a group of outcasts found each other in the Outer Rim. A failed Jedi. Well, we don't have to run out right now and beat people up. We can take a half hour for you. A captain without a ship. I suggest you let your Deveronian friend do the talking and you continue to stare at your stump. And a medic with a mysterious past. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I might have been half wrong. We might die. Together, they hope to find adventure and a little bit of redemption. Oh, that's sweet. They want us tinker buddies. The Redemption Podcast is a long-running actual play podcast set around the time of the Clone Wars, played using the Star Wars RPG system by Fantasy Flight Games and Lucas Books. Check out the show at www.redemptionpodcast.com, a proud member of the Don't Split the Podcast network of shows.